Hi, and welcome back to Euphobia. Today, we'll look at a crazy story that made headlines back in 2014. Elliot seemed to live the good life. He had a rich and famous father, drove an expensive car, and went on vacations abroad. So, what was the problem? What caused this guy to snap? As always, I'd love to see your opinion on the story down below in the comment section. Elliot Rooker was born in London, England on July 24, 1991, to Peter Rogers and Lee Chin. His dad was a British film director, while his mom was a Malaysian-born nurse who worked as a unit nurse on several film sets. He had a little sister called Georgia, and they lived a pretty comfortable life. Growing up, Elliot seemed to have it all. The money, a beautiful big house, vacations abroad, and pretty much everything money could buy. But he still felt inferior to other kids his age, especially those he saw as the cool kids. Being a shy and quiet boy, it was already hard for him to make friends, and he would usually feel left out. When Elliot was young, he and his entire family moved to Los Angeles to start a new life. For a while, everything seemed to be going well, but just when he turned seven, his parents announced that they were getting a divorce. Elliot was devastated. I believe my mother told me that she and my father were getting a divorce. My mother, who only a few months before told me that such a thing will never happen, I was absolutely shocked, outraged, and above all, overwhelmed. One year after the divorce, his dad introduced Elliot to another woman, who later became his stepmom. Although Elliot was not happy with the new development, he still admired his dad for finding a girlfriend so soon after the divorce. Before he even turned 10, Elliot began experiencing various symptoms of mental illness and was taken to multiple therapists. Although they saw that Elliot was clearly struggling with something, they never really diagnosed him with anything. So Elliot grew up a quiet, lonely, and often disturbed boy and would spend most of his time alone or playing online games with a few friends. When he got into high school, Elliot became an easy target for meaner kids who would constantly pick on him, throwing food at him, taping his head on a desk, and even throwing him into a locker. Because of this, he changed school several times, which only made things worse as he was always the new kid who didn't have friends. While in his mid-teens, Elliot started a YouTube channel to let out his frustrations and anger. He would record videos of himself reminiscing about his childhood and complaining about how unfair life was. By the time he turned 18, he had become so isolated and depressed that he became convinced no woman would ever love him. He desperately wanted a girlfriend and was enraged when they turned him down. He thought a makeover might make him more appealing to women, so he got a new haircut, bought some designer clothes, and even got a new BMW. But nothing seemed to work as his situation remained the same, only adding to his loneliness and misery. As time went by, Elliot's anger towards women was piling up and getting out of control. I don't know why you girls are so repulsed by me. It doesn't make sense. I do everything I can to appear attractive to you. I dress nice. I'm sophisticated and magnificent. I have a nice car, a BMW. I am the ultimate gentleman. It made him angry and jealous that girls would choose to sleep with other guys over him, guys who he considered inferior to him. How could they get girls when he couldn't? He hated every person who was in a romantic relationship. I frequently went on walks around town to brood over how hopeless and unfair everything was. When I saw a young couple walking around at the mall, my anger and hatred intensified greatly. His pent-up anger and frustration followed him into college, and when he attended a party in the summer of 2013, everything just exploded. He had gone there hoping that women would finally accept him and agree to sleep with him. But when things didn't turn out as he had wanted, he began making a scene and tried to push some girls off of a 10-foot ledge. Fortunately, he didn't succeed, and he was the one who got pushed off instead. He broke his ankle and was beaten up by a group of guys who had intervened. When Elliot got home that day, he cried in anger and swore to take his revenge on everyone. So he began planning his revenge. Elliot went out and bought three handguns and went to a firing range to practice. Before the day of his planned onslaught, Elliot uploaded his final video onto YouTube. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity against all of you. So the next day, on May 23rd, 2014, Elliot began his killing spree by stabbing his two roommates. They had a friend over who was sadly caught up in his rampage. 
Then, as if nothing had happened, he went out and grabbed a cup of coffee and emailed his manifesto to several people, including his parents and therapist. His manifesto was titled My Twisted Life, the story of Elliot Richter, and talked about his childhood, family problems, and how he had struggled to find a girlfriend, and his hatred for women and couples. He also gave details of his so-called retribution. When his parents saw the video and the manifesto, they immediately called the police, but it was too late by then. Elliot had already started his rampage and was heading towards the Alpha Phi sorority house in UCSB, where he knocked on the front door for several minutes. Fortunately, no one came to open it. He then went back to his car and opened fire on a group of women passing by, hitting Bianca DeCock, Veronica Weiss, and Katie Cooper. Unfortunately, Veronica and Katie died on the spot, but Bianca luckily survived. Elliot drove off, firing randomly at everyone that he came across. He passed by a nearby deli and blasted away through the windows. A surveillance video in the store shows everyone taking cover as the sound of firing bullets filled the air. Christopher Michaels Martinez, a student from UCSB, was hit seven times and sadly lost his life. But Elliot didn't stop there. Using his gun and car as weapons, he hit and injured several other people. The police were hot on his trail and tried to get him to stop, but he even turned on them with his gun. The rampage went on for a while until he crashed badly onto a sidewalk. By the time the police got to him, he was already dead, having blown his head off so he wouldn't be arrested. The whole thing had taken around eight minutes, left six people dead and 14 others injured. All the six people who died were students at the University of California, Santa Barbara. The day after the tragedy, friends, family, and fellow students held a candlelit vigil for the victims. Katie Cooper and Veronica Weiss were the only women who died in the attack. Katie was 22 years old and about to graduate with a degree in art history. She was a kind and loving person and loved playing basketball, soccer, and running track. Veronica was a straight A student who loved solving complex math problems, playing water polo, and swimming. She was also charming and friendly and would go out of her way to make people laugh. Christopher Michael Martinez was described as a great person who welcomed strangers into his home. He was 20 years old and was studying English literature at the university. The police found Wee Hen Wang, Cheng Hong, and George Chen in the apartment shared with Elliot on Seville Road. Wee Hen was a brilliant kid studying computer engineering at the university. Cheng, who everyone called James, was the other roommate and pursued a degree in computer science. He was described as a quiet and friendly person who was always willing to help other people out. George Chen was visiting his friends when he was caught in the crossfire. He was also a computer science student and was passionate about working with children. Elliot's father, Peter, would later apologize to the victim's families for the pain that his son had caused them. He would even admit that sometimes, due to what his son has done, he wished Elliot had never been born. Because of his actions, Elliot soon became known as the King of the Insults, also known as Involuntary Celibates. Involuntary celibacy is an online subculture of people, mainly young men, who define themselves as unable to find a romantic partner no matter how much they want one. They're known to be extremely hateful and threatening towards women. This is where Elliot found sympathy, forgiveness, and even saw him as a hero, which is quite disturbing to think about. Just imagine a whole group of people out there who are just as twisted and deranged as Elliot. It makes my skin crawl. Elliot will be remembered as a misogynistic, narcissistic psychopath who went on a rampage and hurt people because of his delusions. Whether he was suffering from mental illness or not, that doesn't excuse him from what he did. He took the lives of innocent people who were too young to have experienced life to the full. What gets me about this case is that everything could have been avoided. Elliot was constantly posting videos talking about his hatred for women and his plan for revenge against society. The police had even been called to his house before. They went to his home but left before even searching his room. If his behavior was taken more seriously, lives would have been saved. I can't even begin to imagine the kind of pain and grief that the families went through when their loved ones were taken so cruelly from them. I hope that one day they'll be able to find peace. What's your opinion about this case? Leave us your comments down below and remember to like and subscribe for more true crime stories. If you have a story that you'd like us to look at, leave us a comment and we'd be sure to take a look.